Hey guys, it's Barbara and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be creating some fall decor DIYs using items from Dollar Tree. Let's go ahead and get started on our first project. You can pick up a pack of 10 ruler sticks or one gallon paint stir sticks from Lowe's for $1. You'll need six for this project. We're going to cut them down to four and a half inches each, and I'm using my handheld miter shears, which I will have linked in my Amazon store if you are interested in those. You can get two of the four and a half inch out of one stick, so you will need 12 total. Using some sandpaper, I'm going to sand the ends of each one of those down nice and smooth and use two of these signs from Dollar Tree. Remove the succulents. Now they're held in there with like a staple or some sort of thin nail. I just use my pliers to pull that out and then you could peel that hot glue up. And then I sanded that down nice and smooth where I had removed the succulent and then I'll remove all the stickers from the backing and sand that down as well. Using the Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle, I'm going to paint all of the sticks, front, backs, and sides, and the ends, as well as both of the signs all the way around. And this will only take one coat, so you do want to make sure that you paint all the sides of all the pieces. Now I'm going to face these signs towards each other so the openings are towards each other. And then I will start attaching my stir sticks to the outside. I'm just going to start on the outside edge and make sure that I glue them on the very edge on each end. And I'm using some E6000 and hot glue to hold that in place. Then I'll go to the other side and attach the other edge before I attach the centerpiece so that I can know exactly where I need to place the centerpiece so that it will have equal distance between the two sticks. So when you're finished, you'll have three of the paint sticks on one side and you will continue to do that all the way around the piece until all four sides are completed. I do start off on the outside edge for each one and then place the center one just to make sure everything is lined up and pretty centered on all the sides. I used my hair dryer on the high setting to get rid of any of the loose glue strings. And then I'm going to take folk art in the color pure orange, which is a pretty bright orange. And I started off by just dry brushing it on there. As it dries, it does darken up. So I do end up adding a little bit more of the orange paint because I want it to have that nice rustic look, but I want that orange to pop out, but not purely bright, if that makes any sense. I kind of want to make sure that it looks distressed, but you know, the first coat, it's going to soak it up and darken it. So I do end up putting two coats on there as well as the top and the bottom. So the whole entire piece is covered in this orange paint. Once that dries, I'm going to use one of these wood stems from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to hot glue that right to the center at the top. And then I'm going to use some raffia that I already had on hand and just tie that around the top part of the stem. And I'm just going to pull a nice little amount out and then just tie it right there at the top. And then I'll cut the ends off until I have the length that I want it to be on each of the sides. You can leave this just as it is. It's super beautiful, but I wanted to add a little bit of lights to it. So I'm adding some copper LED lights from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to feed that through one of the slats on the pumpkin. And then you can hide your battery box on the back of it when you set it out for your decor. I think this one is absolutely gorgeous. I saw a similar piece recently at a boutique that was slightly larger than this that did not even have the lights and it was selling for more than $15. And I only have $4 in this piece, including the lights. You guys, today's video is a collaboration with my sweet friend Sandra at DIYs at the Schwoven's Nest. She is extremely talented. Here are a couple of pictures of projects that she has already done. She loves farmhouse. She does thrift flips, trash to treasures, Dollar Tree DIYs. She is amazingly talented. I will have a link to her video in my description box below. 
please go over, check her out, let her know I sent you, and show her some love. If you're coming over from Sandra's channel, hello, my name is Barbara, and I'm so glad to have you here. I would love for you to click that subscribe button and the notification bell if you are enjoying today's video, and also visit me on Instagram, my website for free printables, and my Pinterest board. Now we're going to get started on project number two. Using one of these signs from Dollar Tree, I'm going to remove the ribbon as well as the staples from the back and then take some sandpaper and sand down all of those holes. Although I'm going to be covering this up, I want it to have a nice smooth surface. I will also sand down all of the edges because they were a little rough, as well as the front to get off a lot of that glitter. Again, I am going to be covering both of the sides, but I need it to be nice and smooth. I'm using this cute little handheld vacuum that I purchased off of Amazon. I do have that linked in my Amazon store. If you're interested, it was $15 and it is such a lifesaver. Using some just plain craft paper, I want to cover up the glittery part of the sign, which is going to become the back part of our sign because I want it to have a nice finished look. I'm just going to hold each one of those pieces of the sign up and trace that out cut it down, and then attach it to that glittery part with just a regular glue stick. Really emphasizing on those edges to make sure it has a nice good seal. And I will repeat that process with the other two signs. I'm going to set this to the side for just a moment and use one of Dollar Tree's regular palettes as well as six of the tumbling tower pieces and four regular size craft sticks. I'm going to attach the tumbling tower pieces to the back of the palette. For the bottom, I'm going to glue down the skinny side right in between those two end pieces that hold the palette together. And then I will take two of the tumbling tower pieces and glue down the fatter side so it's a little bit more flat on top of those slats so that all of it will be nice and flush when I attach it. All those tumbling tower pieces will be flush on the back side. I'm going to take the regular craft sticks as well as the piece we just put together and I'm going to give that a coat of the Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to apply that really making sure I get down in between all of those edges and then I like to take a paper towel or a wet baby wipe and just kind of blend that in. It lightens it up just a little bit and make sure that I do all of the sides so everything's coated. Now we're going to flip our signs over so that this was the original back is now going to be the front and I'm using this gorgeous scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. I think it was 40, it was on sale so it was like 41 cent. Again, I'm going to trace each one of these individually out and cut those down. And once I have all of those cut out, I'm going to apply the scrapbook paper using matte Mod Podge. Now you might be wondering why did I use a glue stick on the back and I'm using the Mod Podge on the front. I want to make sure everything is sealed and perfect and beautiful on the front. The scrapbook, I mean the uh, craft paper on the back is okay. It was pretty much for just aesthetics to make sure it looked nice and finished if you could see the back, but I want the front to have a really good nice seal. So I put an even coat on each one of these and then press it down once that dries, I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and go in one direction around all of the sides to get any of the excess paper off. Using a square, I'm going to flip them over so now I'm, the back side is facing me. And I'm going to space them about a half an inch apart. And using hot glue, I'm going to attach those craft sticks to the back to hold these three sides together, but also look like it is fencing from the front. So when you flip it around, you'll see a little bit of those slats so it looks like a fence. Then I'm going to attach that palette right to the bottom of the sign, flush with the bottom of each of those signs. So you could hang this up, you could put a hanger on there, or you could let it be a freestanding sign. Using one of these Dollar Tree bouquets, I'm going to remove those pretty little berries with the greenery and then the pumpkin I'm going to cut that in half and then I did take another pumpkin off of another pick because I wanted three pumpkins I just felt like three looked better than just the two 
I placed the greenery, I didn't even glue it down, I just placed one on each side through the palette, and then hot glued the pumpkins down, and then I'm going to use one of these Bitter Sweets from Dollar Tree, they are gorgeous. Cut a couple of stems off and place one on each side and cut, well, I do cut the end of one of the little sprigs so it just has two of the flowers and hot glue those down sort of in between the pumpkins like it's coming up behind the pumpkins. And Dollar Tree has these small bags of pumpkin scented pine cones that have the most adorable little pumpkins in there that are dried. I hot glue a few of those in as well as some of the pine cones kind of tucked in between the leaves in the front. And after those are in place, I'm going to use one of the chalkboard tags from Dollar Tree as well as some of the um, hanger rope that's in there, a white paint pen, and I'm just going to hand write the word pumpkin patch. And I do go over that twice so it kind of pops off of that sign. Make a very simple bow so that I can cover up that hole on the front of the tag. I use hot glue to attach the chalkboard sign right to the front of the palette and also to attach the bow right over the hole. Cut the excess tails off and now you have a gorgeous pumpkin patch sign that just looks like pumpkins and flowers are just flowing from this palette right in front of this fence. I think it's gorgeous. You guys let me know what you think of project number two. Project number three using some of the three pack of five gallon paint star sticks that you can get at Lowe's for a dollar, you will need five of these. Two of these chalkboard signs from Dollar Tree. Remove the hangers as well as the stickers on the back and they were a little bit difficult to get the stickers off. I did have to use a little acetone and you can see that there, but we're gonna cover that up so you won't see that excess acetone on there. I measured each end of each of the signs, and I believe it was a little bit more, maybe like 13 and 5 eighths of an inch. And I do recommend that you use E6000. Originally, I only used hot glue, and I do have to go back and add E6000 because the hot glue did not want to just sit on these chalkboard signs. I glued one on each end, and then I'll push the signs together to take my measurement for the top and the bottom. And I used my hand saw to cut each of these down because they are thicker than the one gallon paint stir sticks. And once I have the top and bottom in place, I can take my measurement for that center piece. This is really going to provide some support where the two signs meet together. Using antique wax made by Waverly, I'm going to go over all of the wood part. And again, my method is to just paint it on there with a paintbrush and then kind of blend it in and smear it around and lighten it up a little bit. And this is when I realized that the hot glue itself was not going to hold the sign together because a couple of the corners were popping up. So I did pull them all off, added E6000 on there, and then used my clamps to hold everything in place and set some paint right there in the middle just until all that E6000 set up and now it's nice and sturdy. And for the back, I want to add a little bit more support. So I'm going to add one of the extra ends of the paint stick to the center, two at the bottom, and then two at the top. So I needed the two at the top so that I could add hangers to it. And I added the two at the bottom so that when you hang it up on the wall, everything will be nice and flush. And these paint sticks will be what's resting against the wall. For the hanger portion at the top, I'm using these sawtooth hangers. These are just the simple ones that come off of the Dollar Tree signs. When I reuse these signs, I always keep the hangers, and I'm going to add one on each side of this sign, just tapping it in with the hammer. They're very easy to add on. Using two of these very small baskets from Dollar Tree, these are the three by eight and three quarter by two inch wire baskets that you find in the organizing section. I'm going to hold one up at the very bottom on the right hand side and make a mark about the third space over with just a white marker. And I set this up on some wood blocks, of course, so I wouldn't drill through my table. And I'm going to drill a hole 
right there where each of those marks are big or wide enough to put my zip tie in. So I am using a pretty large zip tie because I want to make sure that if I put anything in these baskets that the zip tie is not going to break. So you should really pull your zip tie all the way through and then loop it around and then go through the hole. But I don't know what I was thinking. I just pulled it halfway through and then I flip it over and then I realize I've got to pull it all the way through so that I can close it off. So learn from my mistake. Make sure you pull it all the way through before you flip it over. Then you can just push it through the end and cut that excess off. And then I'm going to add the second basket just like I added the first basket. And I'm giving myself enough space so that I can add something or when I put things in the bottom basket, it's not going to hit that top basket. To give it a little bit of a fall feel, I'm going to use this gorgeous scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. This was 41 cent as well. And I am just going to cut out the design that I want. And I kind of want it to go a little bit larger from the right-hand side down to the bottom left-hand corner. So I'm cutting out some of the pumpkins that I wanted and kind of shaped it up. And I don't want to Mod Podge this on here because I really want to be able to use this in my craft room and be able to change the design out at the bottom for any holiday. I made sure that I seasoned my chalkboard because if you don't season your chalkboard, if you write anything on there, it'll be stuck there forever. And I didn't have any double-sided sticky tape, so I'm just taking some tape, rolling it around into like a little loop, and then I'm making my own double-sided sticky tape. And that way I can place my picture on there and I can take that off and I won't damage it and I can change it out for the seasons. Because it's going to be fall soon, I'm just writing hello fall, and then I can decorate it with some really cute pumpkins or whatever decor. This is a pretty versatile piece, so again, you could use it in your craft room, your kitchen, wherever you like. You guys, if you have a favorite, please let me know in the comment section down below. I always love to know which one is your favorite. Please make sure to check out Sandra's video. I will have a link to her video in my description box below. You will not be disappointed. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Please take care, and I will see you guys next time.